So you go to a bar or a pub, you get some onion rings, oh, they're pretty good, but you know how we do it around here. They can be much, much better. Okay, so today we're talking about onion rings, but not just the simple onion, all right? It's about the technique and it's about what kind of batter. Is it gonna be tempura that's better or is it gonna be maybe more of a traditional breadcrumb route that's better? That's what we're gonna find out today. We're gonna make two different versions the best way that we can and well, taste test and see which is better. I don't really, I think that, that actually suffices pretty, pretty good, so. So with all that said, let's make this, shall we? Okay, we have two different rings, traditional breaded rings and tempura boys, each having a different sauce to accompany. As usual, we'll start with Mr. Traditional. First, let's make our onion dipping sauce. In a medium sized bowl, add three quarters of a cup of mayonnaise, a third cup of ketchup, one tablespoon of Dijon, oop, make sure to almost break your wrist with that simple movement, two cloves of garlic that have been grated, one tablespoon of oyster or porcini mushroom powder, which is literally just dried mushrooms ground out, totally optional, but you know, you won't be flexing if you don't do it, two tablespoons of hot sauce, this is Valentina's, and two teaspoons of Worcestershire sauce. Give that some whiskey business until thoroughly combined, and that's your traditional onion ring sauce. Now for your actual onion, you must first acquire two to three large yellow onion. No need to peel it yet, simply cut off the tops, then cut it into half inch rings as close to the root as possible to reduce waste. Peel the outer first layer and then carefully pop them out into multiple individual rings. Please don't break them unless you wanna make papa mad. Also, another thing to watch out for is this little membrane in between each ring. Definitely remove this if it's dangling off because it can prevent the batter from sticking properly. It's good onion ring practice. Now, once you have your rings, that's it. Your onion rings are now done. Haha, -ha. get it? It's a joke because it's uh, stupid. These are going to need a three-way dredge station. One with flour, one with batter, and one with panko breadcrumbs. For your batter, start with one cup of all-purpose flour in a medium-sized bowl, then add one teaspoon of baking powder, one tablespoon of smoked paprika, one tablespoon of garlic powder, and one teaspoon, oop, Right, am, am I okay today? A uh, heaping teaspoon of kosher salt, I suppose. Whisk all that together until thoroughly combined. Separately, acquire yourself one and a half cups of whole milk. Crack an egg in there. Whisk that until nice and combined. Then whisk in one tablespoon of Dijon mustard. Whisk the wet into the dry and continue mixing until thoroughly incorporated and you get a nice looking batter. Separately, you'll need a bowl filled with one to one and a half cups of panko breadcrumbs and another separate bowl with half a cup of just plain all-purpose flour. Now that we have our dredging station, simply grab a few onions, toss them in the flour to thoroughly coat every square inch. Shake off the excess, then fully submerge and dunk into the batter. Pull it out with a fork, let it drain for a couple seconds on a wire rack, set over a baking sheet, then immediately drop into your panko breadcrumbs and toss to coat thoroughly. That is a beautifully coated onion ring. Then just simply repeat the process with the rest of your onion rings, placing them on either a platter or another clean baking sheet to rest as you finish. Once all of your rings are breaded, get a nice pot filled with at least two and a half inches of frying oil, this is about a seven quart Dutch oven, and heat it to 365 degrees Fahrenheit. Now once that reaches temp, fry your onion rings in batches about four to five at a time for about two to three minutes. Maybe a flip in between that time to get even color. And once they reach a beautiful crisp golden brown, carefully remove them from the oil with a spider and drain on a wire rack set over a baking sheet. There's a lot of wire racks involved. And as soon as they come out of that hot oil, immediately season them with salt and repeat with the rest. I mean, that's the story. Now all you gotta do, snag a ring, dunk, and prepare to fly to Flavortown on a rocket shaped exactly like an onion. We have the traditional onion. So these are pretty traditional onion ring. Uh, granted, instead of breadcrumbs, I did panko because papa like panko, because papa likes panko. It's a simple concept. You got the sauce, you got the ring, you give it a dunk, Oh yeah. Oh yeah. You see when you eat this, finito, to all the bad things around you, everything's good. Life is good. Got a sweet little onion, got some crunchy crunch and salty. But more importantly, you don't lose the nostalgia. TJ, I want you to come taste this. This bussin'. That sh that's bussin'. Okay, next is our competitor, the tempura style onion ring. Instead of a mayo-based sauce, we're gonna make a tensuyu, also known as a tempura dipping sauce. In a medium-sized sauce pot, add three quarters of a cup of filtered water, a two-inch strip of kombu, and a quarter cup of bonito flakes. Heat that over medium heat just until hot and steamy, cut the heat right away, and let that steep for 15 minutes. Now, while that's steeping in a separate pan, add a quarter cup of sake, heat that over medium high, and as soon as it reaches a boil, light it with a kitchen torch or a long lighter. Be careful because although you may not be able to see the flame, I can promise you it's hot 
and it will make itself known if it touches you in any shape or form. This has been Safety First with Papa. Anyway, as soon as that flame stops, the alcohol has been burned off, so you can remove the sake from the heat. Now, in a medium-sized bowl, strain your kombu bonita water, which is actually just a quick dashi. Then to that, you're going to add your sake, a quarter cup of mirin, and a quarter cup of soy sauce. Give that a stir, and that's your tensuyu. Now, I'll show you how to use it properly later in the video, but let's talk tempura onion rings. To make your tempura batter, get a large bowl, fill it with three cups of all-purpose flour, one teaspoon of baking powder, and one tablespoon of kosher salt. Whisk that together till thoroughly combined, then get a new bowl because you realize that the other bowl was too small, why do I always do this? Now, carefully whisk in three cups of plain club soda. Carefully, I said. Until it's thoroughly combined and homogenized, and now you have a basic tempura batter. Toss in a couple ice cubes to keep it nice and cold. Trust me, this is helpful. Now, before we fry, I just want to make an important side note. Please cut your onion rings a little closer to more of like a three quarters of an inch or one full inch thick for tempura. You always want them a little wider. It's just uh, ideal. To fry, increase the oil temperature to 375 Fahrenheit. Take a ring, toss it to coat in just regular all-purpose flour, shake off the excess, then dunk it into your batter and gently spin the onion as you drop it into your oil. Let that fry for a couple of seconds, then using a chopstick, start spinning the onion Real real fight. Fight. Now, while you're spinning it, use your other hand to lap up some of the batter and let it naturally drizzle off your hand onto your onion as it spins. This is called painting. It's not mandatory, but it helps get those extra flaky quippies on there, which is always a good thing. You only need to do this for a couple seconds. Don't do it too long or you get a crust that's way too fatty. Now continue frying with a flip halfway through for about three to four minutes or until it's a beautiful golden color. Fish that out using a spider or chopsticks and drain on a wire rack set over a baking sheet. Again, while that's still hot, immediately season it with salt and a light sprinkling of togarashi seasoning, also known as shimi togarashi. It's a Japanese citrus and pepper seasoning, if you don't know what that is. Then repeat with the rest of your tempura onion rings. And let me preface that with, these take practice, but they're worth it once you get them right. Just please, just try. Now to serve these, all you need to do is first prep your sauce. Heat your tensuyu back up until it's nice and hot, then in either a very large ramekin or split between multiple ramekins, add one teaspoon of fresh grated ginger and one tablespoon of fresh grated daikon. Like, you know, the big boy daikon like this. You like that, huh? Then pour your hot tensuyu over that, arrange on your onion rings, dunk, let it absorb a little, and put that beautiful tempura crown in thine mouth. Now, we've got a little bit more of a nicer presentation. Now this is a tensuyu sauce. Not uh, many of you might know what that is, but it's, it's tempura sauce. <laughs> yeah, this is a clear winner for me. They're rich yet delicate. They're lacy, they're ultra airy crunchy, like super crunchy. You got the spice of the togarashi and you've got this umami just black sauce to dip in. And when it's hot and ready, I don't know that it can get much better than that. You wanna know what else is full of big rings, full of giant holes? B-roll. All right, guys, and that is it. So we made our onions, yeah. Look, at the end of the day, both versions were delicious. I was a big fan of the traditional, but I gotta say, a good tempura onion ring is almost completely unbeatable. And that nice tensuyu that you dip it in and it's warm and it's got the mmm so yummy. I know everybody has different tastes and if I were to put an onion ring on a burger, I definitely would have chosen the original route. Plus you can't really get past a nice queeny sauce. So anyway, with all that said, if you enjoyed this video or you learned something, leave a like, subscribe, and I will see you.